So you're thinking about getting that vacation or second home, moving to the Florida Keys? Well, I'm gonna be discussing nine things that may have you thinking differently. So if you wanna know if you can handle the nine negatives about living in the Florida Keys, well, we're getting after it right now. What's up, everybody? This is Jackson Wilkie with the Living in the Florida Keys team. If you want to know everything about what it's like to buy a second home, work, fish, sleep, boat, play uh, right here in the Florida Keys, well, make sure you tap that subscribe button. Click the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. We honestly get so many phone calls, emails, and reach outs every single day from people moving, uh, buying that second home here in the Florida Keys, and we absolutely love it. So thinking about doing any of that right here in the Florida Keys, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, nights, weekends, we got your back when buying that second home or vacation home in the Florida Keys. All right, so I came up with a list of nine things that really caught me off guard, can catch anybody off guard, and I'm gonna see if you could stand these, uh, these negatives when moving here. So obviously, some of these are the reason people are moving here, but really wanted to just be open and honest and talk about those nine. Uh, the last one was the thing that I thought, no way, Jose, could I ever, ever uh, get, buy a second home down in the Florida Keys. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned to that. So number one actually is kind of interesting, or number nine. Let's go with number nine, the sun. Uh, I actually asked somebody once, you know, who really lived here forever, is it ever too much sun for you? And they were like, actually, I mean, well, the husband's like, hell no. Nope, I, I love the heat. I want it every single day. And these are lifetime, you know, residents who who live here year round too. So um, just, I wanted to ask that question to some, and, and the, the gal was kind of like, you know, I love the heat too. I love the sun, but you know, sometimes it, it can be, I, I kind of enjoy a cloudier day. Um, you know, it doesn't get cold very often. We've never had a day, you know, below freezing. And as I've, as I've gotten older and older, it can be tough, you know, sometimes having that sun and that heat. But again, this is coming from people who live here year round. Um, but at the same time, I mean, if you can't handle the sun, basically almost every day in that, that hot weather, uh, you're definitely not going to like the keys. So number eight, Let's go down to the humidity. If you don't like humidity, the keys ain't for you, but that's the South in general. Uh, the humidity, again, I've asked a couple couples this and my wife, um, you know, we came from drier climates. That was one thing that, you know, it, it came up in the comments a lot. And I, and I just wanted to ask people again, I'm like with the humidity, obviously humidity can be very uncomfortable, especially when it's super, super hot after a rain is the worst. Oh my Lord. But the thing that gets talked about a lot from, you know, elderly or even my wife, the females, they love the humidity on their skin. They used to, you know, my wife up in drier climates used to have to just apply, you know, lotions and stuff just 24 seven as her skin was cracking. And so she just really enjoys the, the humidity. It's a lot less of that. But if you can't enjoy or, or really stand the humidity, um, the keys can be brutal sometime. And that's again, like anywhere in the South, some of those summer months. And that's one thing too, you know, the summer months and the rain, uh, the, the humidity levels can definitely get up there. You can't really hide from humidity under a shade tree. Um, so if humidity, hot, sticky isn't your thing, um, then you may not want to live or, or get that second home in the Keys. But I can tell you right now, that's not why most people come here. They love the off season when it's when it's cold where they're from, like me, you know, to be down and it's 60s, 70s, 80s every single day, uh, really getting to enjoy your life instead of, man, I grew up in North Idaho. So, you know, having five, six feet of snow for six months on end was very, very tough, especially as you get older and have kids and that kind of stuff. So um, I like to be able to enjoy year round pleasantry. So that's what you love about it and you deal with the humidity. So number seven on the list is the jobs. Um, if you're really coming down here and trying to lock that big time job, you gotta realize there's basically no corporate structure. Um, you're going to be in the service industry, you're going to be in the fishing industry, and that's really it. We have seen a huge spike of people um, buying second homes or even just moving down here because of you know, COVID, learning they can work from home. Uh, you gotta find you know good areas with those really good uh, internet, gotta find those pockets. We know those, you gotta reach out. But if you're coming down for the job, you just got to really realize, hey, it's service oriented. So, I mean, even the, the Key West and, and every other key up to the north, you're going to be basically working service. But you do have, you know, police officers, fire department, 
who are coming in and, co and going. So again, you know, we love having those conversations so that we can place you in the right spot. But if you're coming for that big time corporate job, it's not really going to be here. All right. So let's go to number six, the flowers. If you have to have flowers and beautiful landscaping, it may not happen. We got those pesky, pesky iguanas that are not from here. Everybody comes down to the keys and sees these giant green or gray big old iguanas and loves them and they're cute. Well, they are flower eating machines. And so the good news is you can grow plants year round. And there's a ton of plants and trees that grow and they just have an incredible climate here to where you can plant year round. But some of the flowers, the incredible scenery, the the, the reds, the blues, all that. I'm not a big flower guy. Come on, let's be honest. But I, I talk to a lot of people that get really irritated with the iguanas because they eat those. And so if you have to have that, I do know and the team knows a couple secret spots where they got the lizard killers, as they call it. So they actually... Um, employ teams to go out and, and eliminate the uh, lizards. So it's not inhumane. It's actually legal in the Florida Keys to kill the iguanas uh, year round 24 uh, seven because they are not from here and, and basically viewed as a nuisance, especially from the locals. So uh, if you're looking for those, ex, you know, extravagant, you know, flower gardens, you just got to watch out for the iguanas. So next up, um, number five on the list uh the smells that's one thing and and the entire florida coast like the atlantic it just has a smell to it now it's not awful and it's something you totally get used to very very quickly but i have noticed especially doing you know traveling all over uh the florida beaches have a distinct smell to them and so you will notice that down in the keys that especially you know they have the seaweed that comes up onto the shores um they have the actual um, tractors and stuff to go out there and scoop that up and place it. You'll see that. So that's really cool that they get rid of it so that we can utilize a lot of the beaches, but you'll definitely notice a little bit of a smell coming to the keys. Number four on the list is the hurricanes. Hurricanes. Um, Hey, you're down in, in the South. You're at the southernmost part of the United States and, um, you can be right into the eye of hurricanes, but I can say that, you know, um, you know, 2017 talking to the team, talking to Lee, you know, coming here since the sixties was the only time he ever had to evacuate. Um, a lot of it from there is, you know, tropical storms or rain, heavy winds. And so those you brace yourself, get everything set up. But, uh, Irma in 17 was definitely one that was, uh, you, you didn't want to mess with. So you, you headed out, I actually talked to a couple of people who did stay, um, and it, it almost traumatized them. So you can prepare your house, you get the shutters up, you put everything away and yet you, you evacuate when evacuating for hurricanes. Um, you know, they actually do it by Island. So or by, by key. Um, and so, you know, the Florida keys comes from the Spanish word Cayo learn that that's pretty cool. Um, so the, they'll, they'll go from key West and, you know, and then they'll also, um, you know, have people start taking off from the South all the way up North. And then, um, the hurricanes, you have to know, Hey, be prepared. So if you're not, cause you got to realize you're a hundred miles of Florida keys. So one may not hit you directly. It could be 50, 70 miles from you. So you're going to get some wind, some rain or those tropical storms being prepared is, is the most important thing. Cause once the warnings come in, everything goes hectic. Everybody's trying to get water. Everybody's trying to get gas. Everybody's trying to get dog food, you know, get pet food, get set up, have a generator, bring that down with you. And so, um, you want to just be prepared for these things so that you can take the time, get your house situated, get everything ready, have your flashlights, have your water, have everything just ready and, you know, hope that, that it veers off and goes back out into the Atlantic and gets the hell out of here. So, yeah, if, if hurricanes are something that you absolutely fear and cannot do, um, then, then, yeah, the keys won't be for you. Sometimes or the majority of the time, you know, a lot of the clients and people come in, they, they don't even live here during the hurricane. The hurricane may come while they're not here. So that's another thing that the team does is assess right after it's done, goes around to each house of, of all past clients and anybody, uh, tr uh, current clients and just assesses houses, assesses damages. And we have all the contacts of all the people that can go in uh, and, and start working on things immediately because the quicker you can get in with water and fix things, uh, the better for sure. So just know. Hey, you're in the South, hurricanes can come. Number three on the list, snakes and gators. Um, yeah, you will see them definitely. But surprisingly enough to me, you know, just always thinking about Florida and seeing these giant boas cross the road and alligators everywhere, it seemed like they're not in the keys. Like it's, it, you rarely ever, ever see them. In fact, um, you know, I, there's the, the rattlesnakes. I still, you know, knock on wood, haven't seen one. Um, but, the, the gators really uh, around Big Pine Key is like the, the, the best 
area for him. So that's t- typically where you'll see him. Um, and there's some, uh, you know, the blue hole and stuff over there it has some, but you rarely see snakes and gators. So yes, they are here. Um, you're not going to hear about, you know, attacks or nothing like that really ever. And in fact, if you do see any kind of snakes or anything, it's usually somebody's pet, you know? Uh, so I don't know why you'd have a snake as a pet. I can't stand snakes. They, Ooh, they're nasty. But, um, yeah, if, if you can't handle snakes and alligators, don't come to the keys, but just know that it, it is not near as bad as going up inland, you know, North into Florida. So number two on the list is the schools. Uh, if you have to have schools, just know that there's not many here but they actually are awarded excellent especially you know i saw in key largo but you have to know too if you have those kids that are in high school and you're going to be moving here key west marathon and key largo they have the high school so the north very north the central and the south so you're probably going to want to be somewhere somewhat close to that um and and other than that i mean you're not going to have all these high schools and all these keys they don't have those so a lot of the keys will have maybe like a k through seven k through eight style but um, you basically, especially down south, you have you have two high schools. So if schools are a huge, huge, huge thing for you, uh, your family, it may be something you want to think about before you know moving, buying that second home in the Keys. So last but not least is before I get to it, if you're loving these videos and they're helping you, will you please hit that like button, comment down below uh, one thing that you maybe caught you off guard or, or something that you'd like to know about the Florida Keys and we'll shoot some videos on that. If you get seasick, you may not want to come to the Keys. There is so much boating and aquatic life around here and things to do and even just going out just a couple miles, you can still see land. It can get so damn choppy. <laughs> and I'm speaking from experience. I've gone out twice trying to do the deep sea stuff. I got Dramamine patches everywhere. I'm taking pills. I can't, I can't avoid it. I don't know what it is about me, but I can't. Um, and it's just something. If you, if you like the deep sea fishing and all that is your thing, um, the majority of people, obviously they don't get affected. But if you're going to get seasick all the time, it may be something you think about. But I can tell you from experience, uh, it's not everything. The beautiful thing about the keys that I've learned, you know, is you can go south, go out in the ocean. If it's a calm day, you know, go out to Sombrero Reef, something, do scuba diving. It won't be bad. But if that wind starts coming up and it starts rolling that boat, man, I, I get sick. So you can head up into the north and, and get tucked away into some of these bays, do some backcountry fishing, that kind of stuff where you're only in two feet of water. It'll be just completely uh, clear and, and flat. So um, it's been something that I've been able to avoid and the pontoon life is more our style, but there's incredible, I mean, you have this big flat deck and you could fish off all sides. Kids love it, jump out, you know, swimming, lobsters, whatever. So you can really get away from it, but <laughs> seasickness is a thing. And I swear it's like affected me there for other things. If I go on swings or rides now, it just seems like after I got seasick those times, it kicked my butt. So you won't catch me out miles offshore anymore, but that doesn't end the immense, uh, incredible things that I can do so close and find my own not so rocky water. But those are the nine things that may have you thinking differently about the Florida Keys. Helping you place you in the right spot is the most important. If you move to the wrong key, the wrong area, and it doesn't fit your lifestyle, it's not going to be as enjoyable here in the Keys. And that's what we love doing. You reach out, have the conversation. What do you need to be close to? What do you like? What style of boat do you have? What kind of lifestyle do you live? And from there, we know three, four little areas that you've never even heard of that will make your time here amazing or your vacation home or second, third, fourth, fifth home. Whatever it is, that's what we do. The only way we can help, you got to reach out. You got to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, nights, weekends, we got your back with all of those things right here in the Florida Keys. And until the next video, guys, we'll catch you later.